It's Monday, the 19th of August. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And today we have an update on the Addison, Texas King Air 350 crash that occurred back in June of this year. Recently released through the Freedom of Information Act from the city of Addison, Texas is the actual surveillance video of the crash itself. So let's review that and see what we can learn. According to the video, the flight lasted a mere 30 seconds and is a very violent demonstration of VMCA, minimum controllable speed in the air. Remember, VMCA is defined as the minimum speed that you can maintain directional control of the aircraft with the critical engine, in this case the left engine, feathered, and the right engine at takeoff power with no more than five degrees of bank into the good engine. Once airspeed decays below VMCA, you no longer are able to maintain directional control of the aircraft and the power output from the remaining good engine will pull you off to the side. In this video you'll see where not only does the aircraft fly below VMCA but also stalls into the hangar. Here we see the incident aircraft departing on runway 15 at Addison Airport. About 8 to 12 seconds before the end of the recording, there is a discussion about confusion about the condition of the left engine. The aircraft becomes airborne and struggles to gain altitude and is now veering well to the left of centerline. Airspeed continues to decay and the aircraft stalls into the hangar. Now here's a front view from an emergency vehicle dash cam. Nobody was in the hangar at this time. As we slow it down and zoom in a bit, you'll see the landing gear is still extended, but it should be retracted, and quite a bit of yaw in the aircraft, resulting in a stall and spin into the hangar. In the initial update on this accident, we reviewed multi-engine procedures extensively and some of the safety features that are built into the King Air to help you with an engine failure on takeoff. But let's review some of the facts that we know with this particular crash. The crash occurred on 30 June 2019 at 0911 local time. It was a part 91 operation. That means privately owned. The pilots were a 71-year-old uh, ATP rated pilot, I assume was in the left seat with a type rating in the King Air. In the right seat was a young commercial rated pilot who appears to not have a King Air type rating. They departed on runway 15. The winds were 100 at just six knots, so a slight left crosswind. The temperature was 79 degrees. They had just topped off the fuel tanks on their flight plan, their IFR flight plan was to go from Addison to St. Petersburg, Florida. Now, topping off the fuel tanks means you have up, upwards of about 1,800 miles of range. The flight to St. Petersburg is only about 800 miles. It's not uncommon to top off the tanks with the fuel at your hometown airport because the price of fuel is cheaper there and tanker that fuel through. Then the aircraft was loaded up with eight passengers and two crew, two, two crew members. So a very full flight plus luggage. So NTSB investigators will be looking at the load plan for this flight, the weight, how that compares to the proper weight and balance for this machine, and other atmospheric conditions as the winds, the temperature, density, altitude. Towards the end of this video, you saw the aircraft roll left into the hangar. At that point, the aircraft was well below VMCA and approaching stall speed. Again, remember, at a heavily loaded aircraft, that stall speed is going to increase. Stall speed increases proportional to the weight of the aircraft. Through, by the end of the video, you can see the aircraft is slewing quite a bit sideways, yawing to the left. It's lost its directional control. It's forcibly turning to the left. The upwind wing is producing more lift than the downwind wing until which time the left wing finally stalls and the aircraft rolls inverted into the hangar. 
This is basically a snap roll. A snap roll is basically a spin in the horizontal direction. The two ingredients you need for a spin are stall and yaw. Insufficient airspeed. So as discussed in the previous video, each takeoff in a multi-engine aircraft requires a plan, a pre-briefed plan. In all my years of experience of check ride after check ride, mostly in simulators, in my case, working for the major airlines, I've boiled down the takeoff sequence to three possible outcomes. One, a normal takeoff, your normal call outs and climb out. Two, a rejected takeoff, where something happens before V1 takeoff speed and you elect to reject the takeoff and stop the aircraft in the remaining amount of runway. Or three, an engine failure right at V1 or right after V1 takeoff decision speed at the most critical phase of flight. So every time you pull out on the runway, you need to have all three of those scenarios and some minor variations on each of those themes squared away in your head before you push those throttles forward and you have to have completely briefed these options with the other pilot. So I hope this helps give you a better understanding of what VMCA means, a very graphic demonstration of VMCA because of the graphic nature of this video. There will be no advertising on this video. I'll be turning the ads and monetization off. Out of respect for those involved with this accident. See you here.